Hi, I'm Florian, and in this video, I'll present our work on remote side channel attacks on anonymous transactions in Zcash and Monero. This is joint work with Dan Bonnet and Kenny Patterson. So our story begins with Alice. She's a blogger that writes about many controversial topics online, so she cares strongly about her anonymity. At the same time, she'd like for her fans to be able to support her financially, so she sets up a Bitcoin account and posts the address on her blog. Now, the problem is that Bitcoin does not guarantee anonymity of its users. So when one of Alice's fans, say Bob, sends her a transaction, any observer of the blockchain can see this. And when Alice herself sends a transaction from her address into the peer-to-peer -peer network, a passive network observer can just detect from which node the transaction came from and use this to identify Alice. And these privacy concerns are realistic. So for cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, there are many companies that sell professional de-anonymization tools, including to the US government. So to retain her anonymity, Alice could decide to use an anonymous cryptocurrency like Zcash or Monero. So here at the high level, Bob's transaction to Alice will be encrypted in some special way and it will include a cryptographic zero knowledge proof that the transaction is indeed valid, that Bob has $5 to spend and that he hasn't spent them before. And this transaction will get propagated into the peer to peer network, but now only Alice will be able to decrypt it. And systems like Zcash and Monero give strong cryptographic guarantees that no network adversary can learn anything about the contents of such transactions. And yet in our work, we show remote side channel attacks that break these strong cryptographic zero knowledge guarantees. So when a transaction is sent into the network, we show how an attacker that participates in the peer-to-peer -peer protocol can discover which peer-to-peer -peer node belongs to the transaction's recipient, thus breaking the unlinkability of the system's transactions. This also means that an adversary who obtains the activist's public key from her blog can figure out which peer-to-peer -peer node she uses. And so the adversary can re-identify Alice and learn about all the transactions that are being sent to her. So in summary, the main contribution of our work is to systematically evaluate the impact of such remote side channel attacks on anonymous transaction systems. We introduce a generic attack framework to think about these types of attacks in different system components across the entire life cycle of an anonymous transaction. And we then apply this attack framework to both Zcash and Monero and show how to de-anonymize the recipients of transactions and how to link payment addresses to peer-to-peer -peer nodes. And finally, for Zcash specifically, we also show that some of our attack techniques have impacts beyond anonymity such as for remotely crashing user nodes, or in principle, even to remotely extract cryptographic keys and to learn about secret transaction amounts. And we disclose these vulnerabilities to Zcash and Monero, and all of these issues have been fixed in the latest versions of both currencies. And some of these fixes actually required rethinking some of the system design choices for anonymous transactions. And a particularly important lesson we think from our work is that getting the cryptography right is not enough. And that there are many system level issues such as side channels that can compromise privacy and that people should care about. In this video, I'll focus on the attacks we found for de-anonymizing transaction recipients. And I'll also talk about some timing side channels in Zcash zero knowledge proofs. And for the rest of our results, I'll invite you to read our full paper. So let's take a look at transactions in Zcash. So at the high level, a Zcash transaction contains a coin, which is hidden inside a cryptographic commitment. And to be able to later spend this coin, the transaction recipient has to be able to open this commitment. So the transaction will also contain an encryption of the commitment opening under the recipient's public key. So when this transaction is sent into the Zcash network, every user will have to check whether they are the intended recipient or not. 
And for this, they'll just try to decrypt this ciphertext using their secret key. And if they're not the intended recipient, then this description, this decryption will fail. And if the decryption succeeds, then the user here, Alice, will further check that the coin that she received is actually valid and that she will be later able to spend it. And this amounts to checking that she can indeed open the commitment that is inside the transaction. And this last step takes time because it involves public key cryptography. And this additional time is exactly what we exploit in our first attack, which we call ping. So here, the adversary's goal is to figure out whether a transaction that is being sent by Bob is intended for Alice or not. And we assume here that the adversary already knows which peer-to-peer -peer node belongs to Alice. So what the adversary does is he relays this transaction to Alice and follows it immediately by a ping message. And this is a standard message that Zcash nodes can send to each other to maintain connectivity. And uh, the crucial point here is that the Zcash peer-to-peer -peer node processes every message it gets uh, serially. And this is a design choice that's a relic from the original Bitcoin client that Zcash built on. So the peer-to-peer -peer node of Alice will send this transaction to her wallet, which contains her keys. And this wallet will check that the transaction is for Alice. And if so, it will also check this cryptographic commitment and finally, when this is done, the peer-to-peer -peer node can respond to the adversary's ping. And because of this extra cryptographic commitment check, the ping response gets delayed by about 1.5 milliseconds on average, when Alice indeed was the transaction's recipient. And this timing side channel is large enough to be reliably observed over the internet. So we found that when the attacker is in London and Alice is in Zurich, the attacker could perfectly distinguish transactions that pay Alice from those that don't. So taking a step back, we should ask, so what, what went wrong here? Basically, the problem is that in the Zcash client, the peer-to-peer -peer node and user wallet are tightly coupled, even though they correspond to very different layers of the protocol stack. Now, ideally, the peer-to-peer -peer node should just manage the currency's consensus layer and collect transactions and expose these to the wallet. And this is exactly the design that Monero uses and that the newer Zcash client now also switched to. So here, the peer-to-peer -peer node just collects all incoming transactions, stores them, and periodically, the wallet, which runs in a separate process or thread, requests all transactions and checks all of them to see if a payment came in. So we might wonder then, well, if Monero already used this design, how come we still managed to attack it? The reason is basically that there was still some coupling between the peer-to-peer -peer node and wallet part of the Monero client because of a bunch of suboptimal design choices in the way that the wallet and node periodically synchronize with each other. In particular, we found an anti-pattern uh, that's quite common, actually. We found it both in Monero and in Zcash's recent mobile wallet, where the timing of the wallet's request to the peer-to-peer -peer node still leak the wallet's processing time. And the reason is that the wallet basically works as in this following pseudocode. It requests new transactions from the node, processes them, and then sleeps for a fixed amount of time, say one minute. And so the time between two requests depends exactly on how long it took the wallet to process their transactions, which we've seen depends on whether the wallet processed a payment or not. And to make things worse, we found that the timing of the wallet's requests could even be inferred remotely because Monero's peer-to-peer -peer node uses a very crude locking system that only allows for one request to be processed at the same time. And so we disclose these vulnerabilities and they've now also been fixed in the latest release of Monero. So, so far we've talked about timing side channels that happen when receiving transactions. What about when transactions are sent in the first place? So at this point, the sender's main computational burden is to produce this zero-knowledge proof that the transaction is valid. And the zero-knowledge property of the proof system guarantees that the proof leaks nothing about the transaction's data. But what about the time it takes to generate this proof? 
So somewhat surprisingly, in Zcash's implementation, we found that there is a reasonably large correlation between the time it takes to generate a proof and the amount of currency that is being spent. And this timing side channel is probably harder to exploit in practice, but this again goes to show that great care has to be taken to ensure that zero knowledge is truly guaranteed at the system and implementation level in addition to the cryptographic level. So to conclude, the main takeaway from this work is that truly guaranteeing anonymity in a transaction system is hard. And in addition to the strong cryptographic backbone protocol, great care is needed at the system design and implementation level to truly guarantee anonymity. And our attacks also highlight the importance of designing anonymity systems from the ground up. So for example, the tight coupling between wallet and peer-to-peer -peer nodes in, Z in the Zcash client was a relic of a similar design choice in the Bitcoin client, which did not aim to achieve strong anonymity guarantees. And in this sense, it's encouraging to see that there are now efforts underway to rewrite the entire Zcash client with a stronger focus on privacy by design. If you'd like to learn more about our attacks, we invite you to read our full paper and we're ha happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you.